start of the final offensives which broke the long stalemate on the Italian front and in three weeks drove the Germans from Italy. On the west coast below La Spezia, 850 rounds of 81 millimeter white phosphorus shells are fired during an intensive cover barrage. Negro troops of the 92nd Division, 5th Army, jump off early in April. Breaking through the last remnant of the Gothic line, they are driving toward the Tyrrhenian coastal town of Massa, 15 miles south of La Spezia. The route of the push parallels Highway No. 1. In direct support of the infantry are elements of a Negro light tank battalion. Wounded being evacuated down a mountain trail by men of the 442nd Japanese Nisei Infantry Regiment. Recently returned to this theater from France, the 442nd takes many prisoners in its phase of the operation southeast and east of Massa. Mopping up continues in the face of German resistance, which intensifies as we draw closer to Massa. Enemy shellings are countered by our fire from Tank 75. Troops move forward to occupy major objectives in the Massa area. Massa is a provincial capital with a population of about 20,000 and, according to Rome reports, has always been a key center of partisan activity. The partisans seized the town just before entry by forward troops of the 473rd Infantry Regiment. The partisans pose with one of their leaders. Suddenly, enemy shells from La Spezia coastal guns explode nearby. A partisan crawls to the shelter of an aid station. Others more seriously wounded have to be carried across the courtyard. Carrara, four miles north of Massa, is next seized. Prisoners taken at Carrara by Lieutenant General Lucian K. Truscott's 5th Army troops. Carrara is a famous Italian marble center. Meanwhile, vehicles of the 442nd Regiment roll up to ford the Frigido River also. Beyond this river, the enemy holds a vital coastal anchor position, which is reduced by mid-April. Elements of the 10th Mountain Division in the Apennines below Bologna. Pushing over rocky terrain, the mule pack train makes its way toward Vergato and the Po Plain. Also contributing to the Allied blows in the mountains southwest of Bologna, bombers of the Mediterranean Air Force Soli. Upwards of 850 planes participate in the forays. Fire bombs from thunderbolts help soften up enemy installations prior to the advance by ground forces. Sixth South African Division moves forward for the attack on Montesole and Monte Caprara. Field Marshal Alexander described the offensive as the last battle for Italy. On April 29th, in the presence of American, British, and Soviet representatives, the German armies in Italy surrendered unconditionally. A series of service stations like those on U.S. highways has been set up by a medium auto maintenance ordinance company to care for the increasing automotive traffic on the main 7th Army supply route. Baldi's service station is operating in Saverne, France, and services an Army Corps. Function of the station is to help make emergency repairs on GI vehicles which break down some distance from their depots. Drivers who bring their trucks, jeeps, and cars to the station usually make their own repairs. 
But if they are unable to put the vehicles into condition, shopmen assigned to the station do the work. The mechanics have the tools and equipment to make major engine repairs, although most of the jobs are not large ones. Stations are also equipped to fuel vehicles in an emergency. Most frequent kind of service is checking of tires and batteries. MPs on a road patrol drive into the station to report a vehicle stranded on a highway. To date, eight of these service stations have been put into operation by the maintenance company. A service jeep is always ready for emergencies. When a patrolling MP reports a stalled vehicle, the jeep is sent out with a mechanic who can make emergency repairs on the spot. Salvage crews moving across the battle zones of Western Europe in the wake of our armies recover items of equipment which are suitable for repair or can be diverted to other uses. Increasing quantities of materiel are being saved from complete spoilage by prompt removal from the field to quartermaster and ordnance depots. One of the Army's biggest headquarters for salvage operations is at Reims, France, where PWs unload boxcars containing the remnants of thousands of pieces of battle equipment. Sorting the mass of recovered items. GI clothing beyond repair is fed to a mill which reduces the rags to floss suitable for weaving OD blankets. Prisoners dismantle a B-26 fuselage for conversion of its aluminum to other uses. In this case, the scrap metal is pressed into mess trays by French workmen. 1,000 trays are turned out daily. Damaged mess gear picked up on the battlefields is repaired by PWs. This shop has turned out as many as 6,000 items a day. At the Ordnance Depot, a tank retriever hauls a modified M4 to the repair base. Tanks and armored vehicles of all types are serviced in a shop which was formerly a French safe factory. The Germans adapted it for tank repair, and as such, we are now using it. American ordnance officers say the machinery is exceptionally good. Wreckage of the Krupp armament works. For five generations, the Krupp family has forged weapons for Europe's armies. Ninth Army elements who capture Essen found the huge plant in shambles. Not a wheel has turned since 11th March, when 1,000 bombers gave the Krupp Works its finishing blow. A Buna rubber plant near Marl, Germany, seized almost intact by the 291st Regiment, 75th Infantry Division. Reported to be one of the largest synthetic rubber factories in the Reich, its output is rated at 30,000 tons a year. The camp for housing slave labor. A 500 capacity air raid shelter adjoins the main plant. A train loaded with V-2 bombs captured by the 1st Army at Bromskirchen, Germany. Complete sections of the robots are found intact despite previous strafing of the rail yards by Allied aircraft. The V-2 normally combines four essential elements, casing, explosive, fuel, and control mechanism. Soaring to an altitude of 58 miles, with maximum velocity exceeding 3,500 miles an hour, it caused great havoc in Britain during the height of the flying bomb attacks. Near Erdingen, Germany, a launcher has been improvised to fire captured German 30-centimeter rockets. It consists of a railroad trailer with racks for emplacing the rockets. Ninth Army units call it the Gizmo Cannoneer Wagon. The rocket itself weighs 277 pounds and contains an explosive charge of 98 pounds. Large stores of these projectiles were found in the Erdingen area. The rockets are packed in 53-inch crates. They are fired directly out of these containers after emplacement in the launcher. Maximum range of the 30-centimeter rocket is 4,500 yards. Firing is done electrically. Problems of supply in the China theater of operations.
Regular freight train running between Gunming and Jianyi, China, arriving at the Jianyi railhead. At Jianyi, the supplies hauled over the railroad are transferred to trucks. Many of the Chinese commercial trucks use charcoal as fuel. A graveyard of trucks. Most of the vehicles are old models which were replaced by new trucks coming in over the Lido Road. From Jianyi, the trucks haul the supplies east to Zhenyuan, where boats pick up the goods and proceed towards Jigyan. Convoys are still made up of every type of vehicle available. The old trucks now haul soldiers while the new models carry the supplies. In order to overcome the difficulties of the terrain, tremendous engineering problems had to be solved with the primitive means at hand. This section utilizes 23 steps or switchbacks to get past a particularly rough spot. Hill 604 under attack by troops of the 32nd Division fighting southeast of Baguio, Luzon Island. Infantry elements attempt to regain the hill after being driven off by a Jap Banzai attack. P-51 strafe enemy positions on the hill prior to our advance. Following the strafing, an assault platoon moves up the hill to attack Japs entrenched in foxholes and dugouts. Our troops run into some sniper fire and set up a machine gun. A smoke grenade is tossed into Jap positions to cover movement of the assault platoon over the hill crest. The platoon moves ahead against light enemy opposition. Riflemen wipe out remaining Jap resistance. Japs left to hold the hill are killed. Enemy machine gunners wounded two of our men before their position was put out of action. Medics and native Filipinos carry the wounded down from Hill 604. Trapped by heavy machine gun fire in their initial attack on the hill, our infantry suffered heavy casualties. At the bottom of the hill, because of a lack of ambulances, trucks are used to evacuate the wounded. The trucks head for the nearby portable surgical hospital. Due to the rough and steep Villa Verde trail, the six mile trip to the hospital takes three hours. The wounded are carried into the hospital tent and given immediate attention. More serious cases are removed as soon as possible from the tent and driven by ambulance to a nearby airstrip. Arriving at Taiyug Evacuation Airstrip, the wounded are taken by plane to a nearby field hospital or to another airstrip where they're evacuated again by C-47 cargo planes. L-5 Mercy ships transport the wounded from Taiyug Field. These planes make the 30-mile trip to the C-47 strip in 30 minutes. The L-5s leave their passengers at Rosales Evacuation Strip, where they're turned over to the 409th Medical Collecting Group. Sometimes the patients are transferred immediately from the L-5 to a waiting C-47. If no C-47 is at the field, the wounded are temporarily housed in a hospital tent. Later, they're loaded on the transport planes and flown to a base hospital. Force films of B-29s at Saipan being prepared for 10th March night raid on Tokyo. 40 bombs of the M-18E-28 incendiary type are loaded on each plane. 
Anticipating no night fighter opposition, machine guns and ammunition are removed from all the planes to permit the carrying of extra heavy bomb loads. Objective of the gunless mission is to continue firebombing of the target. wing their way toward the enemy capital at low altitude levels. A searchlight on the Japanese mainland seeking out our planes is caught by a camera fixed in the tail of a superport. target area is heavy, but as expected, no night fighters rise to intercept the B-29s. By dawn, the strike is completed and our planes head back to their base. B-29 arrives at Saipan. A pilot and his crew report on the raid. A special lift is used to take a wounded gunner out of the rear of a superfort. Although hit by flak, the gunner is not seriously hurt. Lightning struck one plane, temporarily blinding both blister gunners and badly injuring the bombardier. Hit immediately after dropping its bombs on Tokyo, this plane flew back on three engines. Colonel Blanchard, who acted as an observer, confers with Major General Curtis LeMay. Tanks move up a road on Okinawa as troops of the 24th Army Corps push forward against strongly held enemy positions in the southern part of the island. Jap emplacements in hillside caves and ridges are pounded by heavy mortar, tank and artillery fire. Fortified hill defenses withstand the intense artillery and naval gun shelling. Enemy strong points are attacked by tanks and infantry. Advances are measured in yards as our troops maintain pressure against the stubborn Japanese defenders guarding the approaches to Naha, capital of Okinawa. One of our tanks knocked out by enemy shell fire. Elements of the 7th, 27th and 96th divisions attempt to break through the enemy's outer defense line extending across the island north of the Machinato to the Yonabaru airstrip. Pillboxes and hillside caves are reduced with hand grenades and bombs. Questioning a Jap prisoner, the first enemy soldier taken by troops of the 96th Division. The prisoner is marched to be questioned in the shelter of an old burial vault in the hillside. An overturned American tank, damaged by a 200-pound Jap landmine, is salvaged by a tank repair crew. Tactic of the enemy is to permit tanks and infantry to go through their lines, then destroy the tanks in individual charges from hidden foxholes using Molotov cocktails and other anti-tank weapons. A sugar mill captured from the Japs in the town of Futema is used by men of a tank battalion maintenance section as a repair depot for tanks damaged by enemy mines and shell fire. Tanks beyond repair are dismantled 
and the usable parts transferred to other vehicles. A new type of Jap anti-tank mine and the hand grenades which are part of it. The mine is charged with picric acid and is set off by pulling the fuse of the grenade detonator. The powerful explosive charge and the short four to five second delay in the explosion of the mine make it a suicide weapon. Lieutenant General Simon B. Buckner, Jr., commanding the Combined Army, Navy, Air, and Marine units comprising the 10th Army, talks with airmen as plans are made to step up air strikes against the enemy. A truckload of Japanese civilian prisoners arrives at one of our internment camps. Okinawans, whose homes were destroyed in the fighting, are being relocated in villages with adequate housing facilities. The Japanese turn their money over to representatives of the AMG who are in charge of the civilian population. An American medical officer treats the wounded. The population has proved docile and cooperative. Wounded troops are brought to a captured island airstrip for evacuation to base hospitals. The Army's Air Transport Command transfers soldiers and Marines to Guam and other rear hospital areas. An island water purification system is set up by our troops. Health conditions on Okinawa are much better than had been expected, but the presence of liver flukes in the salt and fresh waters makes it necessary to use such a purification system. Admiral Raymond A. Spruance, commander of the 5th Fleet, ashore on Okinawa Island for a conference with Major General John R. Hodges, commanding general of the 24th Army Corps. Rains turn the soft Okinawa earth into mud. Pup tents at the 24th Corps headquarters area are flooded out by heavy rainfall. The water-filled foxholes and mud puddles are used for washing out Army equipment. Navy films of operations against Japanese fleet units, aircraft, and base facilities around the inland sea. Planes from Vice Admiral Mark A. Mitchell's Fast Carrier Task Force strafe shipping at the great naval base of Kure on Honshu Island, north of Okinawa. Two-day assault, a score of warships are hit, including two aircraft carriers. The planes shift to ground objectives, including industrial targets. and 75 planes are destroyed on the ground. The carrier strikes are followed by superport raids over the same area south of Tokyo.